The following is a presentation of the New Jersey Beekeepers Association from the Winter Annual Meeting, February 23, 2013. The topic is honeybees and farmland assessment. The presenter is Jeff Bird. Farmland assessment, and because there's a lot of questions going around about people trying to get into farmland assessment or trying to get their property, or to get phone calls from a lot of people out there that they want you to put bees on their property so they can, so they can get farmland assessment. So maybe we can help out answering a lot of them questions. All right, uh, and, and thank you, Angela. As Angela said, I'm the second VP for NJBA. I'm also the tax assessor for Ewing Township in Mercer County, uh, as well as a beekeeper. Uh, Tim asked me to put a little presentation together uh, for farmland assessment and beekeeping. Uh, this is going to be basically what is on the books right now. As as Anna Trapani will point out, if she has, if she will, if she has, if, if I miss something, there are changes in the legislature right now. Things are through committees, and there being some some tweaking and some fine tuning and so forth. But this presentation is going to be basically what's on the books as of today. We're not going to deal with horses and and grazing, and we're not going to deal with woodland management. This is going to be just basically farmland and honeybees. Okay, now. Oh yay, yeah, it works. Okay. Um, Farmland, Farmland Assessment Act started in 1964. It was basically something that happened back in 61, 62, 63. Uh, farms started selling out and there was a massive housing uh, burst uh, for developments and so forth. And the legislature, along with Governor Minor, said, hey, you know something, pretty soon, not only are we going to lose all our farms, we're also going to have a, a billion kids that are going to have to go to, go to school or have to build schools and whatnot. So, the legislature together cooperatively put together the Farmland Act of 1964, which basically preserved things and uh, what we have today. It, it's, it's been on the books obviously for a long, long time and, and, and has, has been very successful. Um, uh, there's my favorite statute 54-4-23-2. It talks about the five acres. You must, must, must have five acres of, of land that's actively devoted to horticulture and agriculture. Five acre minimum. You can have, you can have a ten acre farm. You can have a hundred acre farm. You must have five acres strictly devoted to agriculture and horticulture. Okay. Yeah, does that exclude the buildings that sit on that? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's just land. That doesn't. That does That's we're going to touch on. Uh, I might have passed that, but uh, yes. Uh, if you've got, let's say, if you have six acres, okay. The typical rule of thumb for most assessors is that uh, your house, and if you got a barn and you got a couple of sheds or whatever. That's going to that's going to account for one acre. So if, if you have if you've got a farm where you have a house and some outbuildings, you really should have at least six acres. Okay. There are some rare cases where that may, there may be some flexibility, but generally speaking, six acres. If you have a house where where you live in, and and you have a house on that property, six acres should be the minimum. Okay. Um, and it, uh, let's see. This talks about 54.4-23.3, talks about all the good stuff that, that's, uh, that's beneficial to man and other animals, that, that, which includes bee and apiary products. This does not include dogs, okay? There, there's a specific, if you go further down the statute, there's a specific exemption there for, for anybody who has kennels and raises dogs, okay? Dogs are not considered agricultural use and beneficial stuff. Um, again, basic requirements, basic requirements, Applicants, but you must own the property, okay? You must file an FA-1 form, FA for farmland assessment, FA-1 form with the municipal assessor by August 1st of the current tax year. Uh, the land must be devoted to agriculture or horticulture. Uh, you, as we mentioned before, five contiguous acres. Uh, that does not include, as we just mentioned with Rod's question, about houses and barns and so forth. The, uh, and you also you know, must have gross sales, gross sales, not net sales, gross sales of $500 for the first five acres and five, five acre or five dollars for each additional acre. Yes. Corporations, uh, corporations have done farmland. Yes, that I'm aware of. I've had corp they have to own the land, right? They, they, as a matter of fact, uh, if anybody familiar with Ewing Township, Mr. Atchley's old farm was bought up by Mr. Bloomberg, Mayor Bloomberg's company, and uh, uh, Barry Taylor, who basically does does soybeans throughout basically Central Jersey, was farming it for uh, for Mr. Bloomberg for for six or eight years, and they were receiving farmland assessment. Um, 
and we'll talk that I think on the next slide. The owner must represent that the land is going to stay in agriculture or horticultural use. Farmland assessment, if you start the program, the first two years that you apply for farmland assessment, you will be denied. Okay, starting the third year, that's when that's when the, the, the farmland assessment, the favorable assessment kicks in. Uh, as the question was in the back, if uh, if you have a farm or you're renting property from somebody, let's say if Rod has a farm and I'm going to rent property, for, rent rent the ground from him, my 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 rental payments that I make to Rod are not income. All that matters is what I'm producing as the farmer. Okay, so if I've got blueberries, strawberries, potatoes, pumpkins, squash, whatever the case may be, the far, the information for my my gross income is going to be put on the FA1 form not what Rod reports as rental income for me being there, okay? It's all about what the land is producing. The biggest thing is what, what is managed. What, how are you managing your property, okay? Uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is our favorite FA1 form. It looks pretty crazy, but actually, considering for the state of New Jersey, this is not a, pretty, this is not a bad form, okay? <laughs> believe it or not, believe it or not. Uh, what will happen is that, uh, and, and we'll have a close up in the, on the next slide, but the directions are on the back. This is actually was updated in, I think, in July of 2011. So this is, I, I have some, uh, a bunch of forms that I had in the office. They're, they're, the, they're the previous version of 2003, but if you want to look at those, there have been some minor changes, but it will give you the basic idea of what it looks like up, up close and personal. Okay, section three, part D. This is where we talk about bees. And they want to know the number of hives that you have. Okay, on the farmland form, they are looking for what you put in. Let's say for the farmland that that I, I did for for I will be I, I did for 2012, but I submitted for 2012. I'm showing my income from 2011, but on the form I have what I put in the field for 2012. Okay, so your income is kind of like a year behind, but the present your 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 current information on what you have in the field right now is what you're submitting on the form. Okay. August 1st is the deadline for application, yes. Okay, so this year, August 2013. Correct. And what figures Okay, the figures I'll put in on the FA1 form is what I have actually in the field for 2013. But to show, because a lot of people don't have, after, after August 1st, a lot of people, if you've got uh, like winter squash, things like that, that stuff you don't harvest, or pumpkins, let's say you don't harvest until like September, early October, you won't know what you're getting for income. Okay, so basically what you want to do is put your, put your income, when, and I'll show you the next couple slides, you'll have your income from, from 2012, that'll be on the 2013 tax, uh, on your FA1 form for 2013. Okay, well, sometimes I, sometimes I, I do this every day, so sometimes I kind of whiz on through it. And, and does everybody understand that? The income is uh, the income typically is for the calendar year. Yes, yeah. For and like I say, in, in my example, whatever whatever I, I did on my brother's farm and I did with bees, I, I'll put on I put on my federal income tax returns for 2012, and that's what I will report with my 2013 farm application. Okay, so you, you, you're you're putting on you put on the FA1 form what you have right now, current year, the current year, and then then to justify your income, you're showing what you made in the in, in the past. Yes. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, now there's a supplemental land use form that that the assessor will typically give you. Okay, and Tim, you got your, the, the pointer? Okay. Uh, this section right here, okay, there's cropland harvested, cropland pastured, uh, permanent pasture, not a pertinent woodland, and woodland, uh, and not a, and a pertinent woodland, excuse me. In, in this row in this column right here you'll have different soil classifications a b c d and e a is really really good it's very productive farmland good soil and so forth b is very good c is okay d and e are not so good okay so i was and and, and th this will be a part of your farmland application for the first year uh everything that fills out in this section that's what the assessor is going to be filling out because uh there will there'll be calculations from the uh from uh actually it's done through Rutgers, but it's not actually by Rutgers. The FEAC, the Farmland Evaluation Advisory Committee, does, uh, does calculations on, on what the productivity is per acre for each crop that's planted, okay? 
uh, and it's kind of a statistical anomaly because that's what they crank these numbers out and then they give them to the assessors to figure out the productivity per acre of what you're following for your farmland assessment. Over here, you'll see that there's different acres. Uh, if you have got corn, you got hay, you got wheat, uh, and so forth. Okay, it, it's, it's the, this is more for the, for the bigger guys uh, that have a lot of acres, but you still have to complete it as well, even if you have a smaller farm. Uh, what the assessor is looking for in this case is that they're looking for a plot plan in addition to the, to the previous form where a lot of people, some pe most people don't, people have their surveys of their property handy, survey of the property they own, okay, less than 1%, okay, that, that's typical, okay. Uh, you, you can typically get a copy of your tax map, which is what I do, and then you kind of like do a little, do a little draw time, okay, you've got up here you got clover, you got 14 acres of clover, down here you got 34 acres of soybeans, you got pasture over here, and then you have your house, your barn, and you got your beehives, okay? That will be all filled out on, on your farmland form of what you actually have, and uh, let's see. We talked about the FEAC, this is where they, they do the soil ratings, A through E, how productive the soil is, okay? Uh, that's a little more technical side, uh, and I guess not really bee related, but obviously if you're if you are putting clover in, you're putting buckwheat in, okay, just start figuring things out and, and whatever's kind of bee friendly, good pollination, good nectar producers. Uh, soil packs, this, this slide can come out as good as I, I had hoped. Uh, the different sections are, uh, even though it used to be in color, it didn't come out in the color when I scanned it, uh, but this is also called a soil patch. This is what you should do, uh, this, you're required to do this for the first year of your farmland application. And this will give the assessor an idea of how to match up your soil grades, A, B, C, D, E, and uh, no, no, F, just A, B, C, D, and E, okay? Uh, this is your, uh, since we're getting close to tax time, this is our Schedule F for our federal income tax returns. This is what we're looking at predominantly when you, when you submit your information for your income, okay? You're looking for tax year 2012 and the gross income is what you're looking for for your for your farm uh, for your farm property. That's what the that's what I as an assessor I look at that to, to verify you've made your five hundred dollars for the first five acres and the five dollars for each additional acre. Now, for example, my, my brother's farm in Hopewell has got seventeen acres. He has a, he has a house and a small barn, so sixteen acres are there. So that means that you have five acres plus eleven. So I have to show that I have income for five hundred fifty five dollars a year for gross income from that farm. Okay, at a minimum. Okay, uh, and it, typically this is this is what your accountant fills out. Okay, if anybody still does their own taxes, God bless you. Okay, I, uh, uh, unless you're a CPA or something like that, but uh, your your accountant should be very familiar with 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 your Schedule F and so forth. Um, what 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 do I look for for farmland assessment? Okay, well, first of all, it, 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 it's it's like one of the decision boxes we used to do like basic programming in high school or middle school, whatever. Do you have five acres actively devoted to, to agriculture or horticulture? Yes, okay, then you move on. No, then, then you're not in the program, okay? How is the farm being managed, okay? A lot of people that I've come across, I used to be the assistant assessor in West Windsor and also at the Raritan Township, uh, and people would always think that like, hey, I'm just gonna put a couple sheep out there, and, and I, I've got eight or 10 acres, I'm gonna put, put the beehives out there, the assessor, the, 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 the whole purpose of the, the Farmland Assessment Act was to see property that's being managed, okay? Not just being laid dormant, not just being neglected, and just kind of out there growing weeds and whatnot, and be, you know, being overrun with uh, monofloral rose and, uh, and what's it, uh, autumn olive, that's uh, always a treat too, even though it's a, it's a pollen producer, right Seth? Autumn olive? Oh, okay. Uh, the <laughs> they, they also want to find out what are you planting, and that, that's going to be on your FA1 form. Okay, what do you plan? It, uh, they, they, they give you various descriptions, I think everything, and there's even some extra space there if, if something that's not on the form you can put in. Um, the larger farmers, the big farmers, you really don't have to worry about that. Uh, when, I was, when I worked in West Windsor at Raritan Township, I was very lucky because, uh, well, the typical rule of thumb is that the assessor will come out and look at your property usually every three years, okay? And, and as we found out before, you know, people don't usually like people from the government coming out to their farms and looking and snooping around, okay? I, I was very fortunate because most of the people that I went to see at West Windsor and also Raritan, I, I was in 4-H with them. So that, that kind of softened the blow a little bit. They kind of 
they, at least, they believed at least half of what I was telling them, so that, that worked out well. Uh, the smaller farmers, this is where they, they, uh, the gentleman farmers, the part-time folks, this is where you have to really be a little more scrutinous uh, and give them a little more attention because for the smaller folks, they typically, uh, for the most part, I'm painting with a wide brush, but they don't know what, they usually don't know what they're doing. They don't know what, they're, what the forms to fill out. And sometimes there, there's that, there's a fudge factor involved too. Okay, so they need a little more hand holding and they maybe need a little more visitation to see what they're actually doing. Okay. Um, okay. In this particular case, you can see, if you can see maybe more in the front, there's actually, you can see one hive there, one hive there, and there's actually six hives in, uh, in, in that bee yard. Now, would you consider this to be managed or not? No, okay, it's not, it's kind of overgrown, okay, and more than likely this would not qualify for farmland assessment. Uh, well, that would be a challenge also. <laughs> Question. Oh, oh uh, the, question, the question was if, 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 if someone intentionally planted the uh, monofloral rose or put in the autumn olive. Okay. I mean, actually, I, I think if you put it in rows where it looks organized, then it would be managed. Okay. Okay. This uh, next slide. Okay. Now, here we have, here we got eight or uh, six or eight hives. We've got the hives in the front. We've got, we've got, looks like what we had, uh, I think there were soybeans in the back. And we had some, we had some clover behind the beehives. This, this I would consider to be managed, okay? There, there's certain things that are going on, it's being actively worked and so forth. Uh, th this would be considered to be managed, okay? And, and, and the income from the bees, from the, from the honey, or whatever the case may be, would be counted towards your income, towards your farmland assessment. Okay, oh, okay. Now, good example. This is my big brother, Tom, okay? And this is the, one of the bee yards, this is where I keep my bees at, at, at my brother's farm in, in Hopewell Township. Uh, now, situation like this, okay, you're plowing up your, 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 your land. Tom's doing the disking right now. I think he's gonna put in some winter wheat. Uh, so, hey, it's being managed. It's being worked. There's a plan involved and it's being managed. Actually, this is kind of a unique picture because for the past, oh, probably for the past 50 years, anytime I try to take a picture of my brother, he usually ended up giving me some sort of gesture. So this is, he's either, Tom's either starting to mellow out in his older middle age or he's just kind of tired. So, uh, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, maybe I caught the camera, the camera caught him before he's going to you know, wave to me or something like that. Yeah, got a question. Oh, uh, again, here's winter wheat that my brother planted. You can see it's mad, something's going on, it's growing. Uh, we'll wrap things up pretty soon. Uh, the, what I recommend to people is that you have a three year plan. Anything you do on your farm property, if, especially if you start, if you're starting brand new, take a lot of pictures. All the digital cameras now have have uh, you know date stamps electronically recorded on, on, on the photographs. Always have always have backup information and backup data. Uh, always common sense stuff. Keep keep good re records for income and expenses. Uh, when you go to see, oh, it, especially if, if I'm renting Rod's property, make sure that you're going to be you have something in writing. Now, my brother and I, it, it, uh, it, it, it's a great deal because I'm raising bees and I'm harvesting honey and I'm helping my brother get farmland assessment. So that's good, along with his management property, uh, management uh, uh, fulfillments. Um, please don't wait till the last minute to submit your FA-1 form. Usually every year someone comes in at 425 on August the 1st and has a box full of stuff and says, here's my farmland stuff. Well, that's, that's a big problem, okay? It, it, if you're just starting out, if you're just starting out and you're, you're uh, try to meet, sit with the assessor sometime in April, May, June, and say, hey, here's all my forms, you know, just make copies, here, here's a rough draft, does everything look okay? They can make suggestions about what you're doing or you're not doing, you should be doing a little bit better, okay? Um, let's see, <clears throat> rollbacks, rollbacks are real bad, I'm just gonna touch on this. If you, if you stop your farm use, Okay, you'll be subject to rollback taxes. If it goes from agriculture, horticultural use to a non-farm use, that's very, very, very bad <clears throat> because the municipality will, will, will uh, put you back into regular assessment for not one year, not two, but three years. It's the current year plus two. So in the case of my brother's property, let's say for example, uh, with his farmland assessment on his 17 acres, if he's saving $4,000 a year being in farmland assessment, 
That means when you hit, hit a rollback, you'll be hit with a one-time bill of $12,000, okay? And, and, and the towns love it because they don't share that money with the school board, so they, that, that, that's a really a win-win for them. Um, any, uh, I, I, just very, just very few questions. Yes. Is that a typical savings about $4,000? It, it really all depends on how many acres you have, or, or whatever the case may be. It really depends on where you are, what the <clears throat> what the regular market value of your land is, and how much land you have. That's just a, that, that's just an example that we had, like in Hopewell Township in Mercer County. <coughs> Yes, and, and Angelo actually reminded me is that you, you, your house, if, uh, let's say my brother's house and his, his two barns, that is still assessed at a regular regular rate. Okay, you don't you only get a break on the land. You do not get a break on the pro, on, on, on the buildings and the structures on, on the uh, on the farm. Okay. Question, Jeff. Yes. Right yes. Is there a standard formula or percentage that applies to New Jersey as what your reduction is from the otherwise you know value? It all depends on the municipality, what the value, what the market value of your land is, and how much land you have. And yeah. Then, and then is there a substandard percentage or average, you know, that it's not down? Uh, it, it's really all based, uh, when, when the farmland goes into effect, it's based on, on that one form that we showed where, where you have the, the working on the soil classes and how much acreage you have in those soil classes. That's how the assessor determines what your new farmland assessment will be. Do you save, you know, 90%, 50%, 100% on, 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 on what you would have been paying? I, I, I would say as a general rule of thumb for the land only, land only, you're probably looking at maybe a, a reduction of any, uh, I'm just guessing at this point, anywhere from 80 to 95%. Okay, uh, in some cases, you're, you're, if your assessment is 150,000, you may go down to 500. Okay, so that's, I mean, it, 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 it's, 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 it's a chunk. Yes, Anna Trepani. Because I, I know there's several assessors that'll call that'll call up Tim. Question? Is there a question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Question is if, if there was more. Pollen sources, uh, let's say there was more multiflora rose or more, more uh, autumn olive, would that be considered to be a good pollen source and that, would that qualify? In this particular case that we spoke, showed in the slide, we know because if, 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 if it's done naturally and, and grown wild, it's not considered to be managed. Okay, Matt? The bees themselves, the bees themselves uh, singly and by themselves would, would, not, would not qualify for, for farmland assessment. Okay, there has to be some sort of, that has to be, show some sort of management involved where you're actually working the land and, 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 and there's some sort of production, potential production being involved there. Or we had the other ones where it was just, it was just growing wild and uncontrolled and you had some, you had five or six beehives there that would not qualify. You, well, the, the, again, I, 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 Woodland, I'm not sure about. Oh, uh, uh, he, uh, okay. All right, Drew, Drew asked about, about woodland management, and I'm not I'm not that familiar with woodland management and how they affect it and how they're they're, they're taking with the bees. So that that I, I would not be I don't know if I answered that question. Okay. Yes. Yes. With, yes. Very. Very. Yes. If you if you're in a woodland management program, you're a forester, and, and I believe it's a five or is a five or ten year plan, ten, ten year plan. Okay. Uh, for for the woodland management program, and that that's kind of a whole different category. It's sort of it's sort of kind of a distant cousin from farmland assessment, so that that I'm not that I'm not familiar with. Yes, Bob. The property, yeah.
Yes. Yeah. Uh, did everybody hear Bob's question? No. Okay. Uh, okay. Bob, Bob, Bob asked a question about it. it Bob is under the impression that, that just having bees in the property should be sufficient with the income that's produced from the excess honey to qualify for the income requirement. And that, with that, in that particular case for the income, yes, but everybody that I talked to from Division of Taxation down to every, every I talked to about probably 15 assessors throughout different, about six or seven different counties. And as long as the, the property, you have to work something, you have to do something with the property. Besides having bees, Besides having bees yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. How much does the, the crop count as far as the assessments? Are you raising corn? Are you raising alfalfa? Well, okay. It depends. It doesn't really matter what crop you're growing, as long as you show that you're managing the property. You, you can be you can be putting rye in. You can be putting winter wheat in. Like my brother is here. Uh, that that's that's the you, you have to show that your property is being managed. Okay. Yes. Uh, a, 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 a lot of people do that. Okay, but technically you should really be doing something. I mean, it, 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 mowing is considered managing, but it's also good to at least have something planted. Uh, obviously, some assessors said like hey they want to know what, you, what you're planting because if it's if it's going to be a pollination source for the bees that's what they're they're more concerned about that, that as long as the property is being managed mowing it is sort of managing it but but uh, most assessors are going to be looking for having something actually physically planted in the ground okay and that that's what's going to be on your farmland form yes yes That's correct. Yes, as long as you, the question was, if you plant something like buckwheat, and then and, and you're not going to harvest the buckwheat, but it's there to support the bees, that is still okay because because you are managing the property, you're managing the land. Yes, Pete. Uh, well, if, if if you are specifically planting it. If you if you are planting something, whether it's wildflowers or whatever the case may be, if, if you are showing that you're managing the property by by physically planting something, then that that would be considered managing the property. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, and, as long as you know that after the second or third year, you don't have to replant, as, 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 because the assessor typically will come out, out, out every three years and look to see what's being planted out there or, or what's actively growing out there. Uh, instead of just, just like I say, if, 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 it's, if it's just strictly getting, getting flown, uh, thrown out and growing free and wild, that's not considered managed, okay? All right, I gotta move on a little bit. Okay, but, so bottom line is, make sure you have something managed, that you actually have a plan and you're doing something with the property, okay? Uh, Unfortunately, we're running out of time, and, but I want to, uh, I will talk to anybody privately a, a after we eat. I want to thank the assessors I spoke to in the various counties, Division of Taxation, Rutgers Co-op, and also the Ag Station for their, their information and their, and their help with this. And you can write my name and number down in my email if you want to shoot me a question. Uh, if I can help you out, I certainly can do my best.